A tale of two oppressed communities. At first glance, the communities of Ferguson in Missouri and of Gaza in the Israeli-occupied territory share virtually nothing in common. One is situated in the richest nation on earth. The other sits on ancient lands, lands that are constantly shrinking under the occupation. One is predominantly African-American. The other is populated by Palestinian Arabs. One is ostensibly free, the other largely under the military control of a foreign power. What unites these two communities is the commonalities of oppression, for both experience the ubiquitous presence of armed outsiders, whose job, it seems, is to make their lives miserable. Ferguson, Missouri, where the overwhelming majority of the population is black, live under a predominantly white administration that cares little for that community. It is a living snapshot of an affront to democracy. Gaza, where the majority of the population are Muslim and Christian Arabs, live under the constant threat of military occupation and control of every aspect of Gazan life. Oh, and yes, oppression kills. In both societies, racism against the inhabitants takes on stark and undeniable violence against the people. There, special repression is reserved for the young. We saw that in Palestine, where children were targeted by Israeli police for horrific violence, beatings, and even killings. Ferguson burst on the scene after the ugly shooting of a teenager named Mike Brown. As for Palestine, generations have lived shattered lives, especially since 1948 when the League of Nations, later to become the UN, ceded Palestinian lands to the newly created state, Israel. But let us not suppose Israel's growth was accomplished merely by a British grant of land. Land was seized by force, armed force, and yes, terrorism. The terrorism of the Irgun Zwei Leume, the Haganah and the Stern Gang, which attacked scores of villages throughout Palestinian lands like the village al Dawayima, where, according to one elder, some 580 Arab civilians were slain. Yosef Namani, a Zionist insider, said plainly that, quote, massacres were part of a general policy or campaign of expulsion, a means of prodding the villagers, unquote. The British and U.S. supported Zionist project was made possible by these mass expulsions of Palestinians. 1947 and 1948 marked not just Israel's establishment, but the disestablishment of Palestinian sovereignty and power. Britain, and later the U.S., wanted an attack dog, a pit bull, to protect their oil possessions in the region. Israel fit the bill, and U.S. taxes to the tune of $3 billion a year goes to the country to build Fortress Israel. But it's not just American money that fuels Israel's mega militarization. It's Americans who settle in Israel and bring with them American style racism and imperialist thinking. Think of the Likud party's Benjamin Netanyahu, the most bellicose prime minister in history. He's from right outside of Philadelphia the suburbs of Sheltonham and Bryn Mawr, where he went to high school. For them, Zionism is but a form of U.S. manifest destiny. And the Arabs? They're the Apaches. Through land theft, guerrilla raids, and terrorist attacks, the Palestinians have been whittled down to its miserable present, modern-day Bantustans, where they are living on the shredded margins of their ancestral lands, like the Indians of U.S. memory, they live in the equivalent of reservations, the worst land left. As the recent Gaza-Israeli war showed us, the Zionists placed no value on Arab lives. The Zionist state was built on Europe's bad will. For although under the trusteeship of Britain, they offered other people's lands, not an acre of their own, that bad seed has sprouted into the horror of today. Two communities, one oppression. From Imprisoned Nation, this
This is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Oh yeah! <laughs> Black sun in the hizzle. Oh, for shizzle dizzle. Y'all didn't haven't had an intro like that in a while. Since the days of, uh, was it the Black 80 of Atlanta? Because we got an old family member here. But what I want to say is the views and opinions in that of the arena does not reflect that of Comcast, its staff, or affiliates. With that being said, viewer discretion is advised. Today's show, the end of Willie Lynch. Let me say that again, the end of Willie Lynch. Okay? Um, if you are a black male, this show is for you. If you're a Hebrew Israelite, this show is not for you. <laughs> if you are a Moor, this show is not for you. If you are half, well, my mama's half Indian, uh, my mama's white, and this show is not for you. This is for the black male of all ages. This is our civil war. Mm. So with that being said, I want to have everybody introduce themselves. Brother. I'm uh, oh, Brother Winston McKenzie. Uh, you know me, Vincent Cheeks, actor, activist, brother DJ, and I do work. That's what's up. Brother, brother Yanga, you know me, but <clears throat> I'm going to say address what you were saying. I don't know. I don't know, son. I think there may be for those people who call themselves Hebrew Israelites, mm -hmm. Moors, and this. Th Yanga, yeah, that, you about to make me gavel you. Hey, that's the division, though. Listen, Isn't that the division? That, that that the whole we don't have thing? to have. Yeah, that is. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I'm tired of these conversations. See, yeah. brother, see, black means, see, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm tired of that. Yeah. yeah. We have an agenda. Yeah. We have Ebola. Yeah. Mm. We have goddamn uh, ISIS. Mm. We have all types of stuff going on. And, and you, you got a crazy, how do Google get past the White House fence, all the security, and get on right. Obama, Obama's <laughs> goddamn, you know what I'm saying? Right. They're about to initiate a race war here. Mm. So I don't have time for petty conversations yeah. about, well, see, brother, see what you mean, see, brother, see. Mm. Get your own goddamn language. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of these people coming with the white man's Bible, mm. with the white man's language, or, well, see, brother, this is 301 CC. So I'm tired of it. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to in view this conversation, then view it. Yeah. If you want to have something to say, but this, I don't want to hear the subject about we're not black. I we are that. black. Yeah. I've declared it, okay? All right. <laughs> I've declared it. We are black. Yeah. Malcolm X declared it. Yeah. Garvey declared it. Yeah. So that, that's it. The Black Nationalist Paper, this, this is what we declare. These are our no elders doubt. right here, okay? No Anybody else to me is an Uncle Tom. Mm. Seriously. Yeah. I'm not playing at this point. Yeah. So let's get, let's, let's get down to it, gentlemen, because I'm, I'm tired of the games, man. We, we, we act like children. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Death is upon us, mm -hmm. and we're sitting here playing. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no time for jokes anymore, so let me talk about the young and old, okay? Let's talk about the young and old. Mm -hmm. Let's get started with Willie Lynch. But before we start, I have to calm down. Like, we'll we'll brother. We'll we'll brother. Yes, we'll yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> Today we're going to be getting into the sub subject of the Willie Lynch letter. Yes. Uh, hopefully all black people out there know uh, the subject content of the Willie Lynch letter. If you don't know, uh, it's basically Willie Lynch was a guy from the West Indies who America sent for basically uh, to come over here and teach them how to handle uh, their slaves, how to keep them in control and uh, suppression. Uh, so he came, traveled from the West Indies in 1712, uh, and gave this speech on the banks of the James River, basically saying how to keep your slaves under control, ultimately through division. You find any difference that black people have, uh, whether it's age difference, right. uh, mm -hmm. sex, young versus old, male versus female, any difference, house versus mm -hmm. uh, feel, mm -hmm. uh, any right. difference you could find and you make it greater than it is to cause division. And then once you cause the division among the people, then you can insert your solution and they're looking at you 
you know, like you're the ultimate answer mm -hmm. and savior. Right. And it, it's basically to cause a uh, divide and distrust amongst your people and have you solely rely on the white man. But not only solely rely on the, right, uh, the white man for that time, but for generations. That's mm -hmm. right. Okay? His plan is division, division and terror. Mm -hmm. right. right. Division and terror. Fear. Yes, yeah, was right. to last for generations, yeah. correct? Well, mm -hmm. like I told Watson here, you know, Winston. Winston. I'm sorry, Winston. I'm, my, my apologies. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm right. just, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna blame Quint, Yang. He, he gave me that red hey, bull. Hey, yeah, hey. I'm like, how do you get Quentin Houston from Winston? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Winston, well, yeah. I, I remember you had you had introduced. You said every Sunday, you know, you, you're down at the West End uh, Baptist, and you take young mm -hmm. black. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -mm. You. Explain, good explain. Shepherd, good Shepherd. Good I Shepherd, attend, I'm uh, sorry. Good Shepherd Community Church. It's a non-denominational church. Um, I would even go as far to say it's uh, very um, important to <laughs> have a church like this in a neighborhood in the Western because okay. we go back and we talk about our history. Okay. Not his story, but our right. history. I'm glad you put that. And so the thing is, one of the things that we do is like we have a Black Males Forum. Um, every second was it every it was every second Friday now it's coming down to the last Friday of the month where we discuss issues within the black community love to have you guys come out that would be great okay. um, and we talk about the issues but the, the greater goal is to talk about what type of solutions are we gonna have mm, that's right for these these uh, epidemics <laughs> mm. within the black community because we're supposed to be this nation within a nation but a strong Public nation, side. going back to something we were talking about earlier, dealing, dealing with the finances and the, and, and the munitions and whatnot. Yeah, we need all of that. That's mm -hmm. important. But how do we get to that point? Um, I was having a conversation with Brother Black. And I think the, the greater thing is this. When it comes to this whole Willie Lynch thing, um, is, it, is it fictitious? I think so, perhaps. Well, let me, let is me it ask relevant? This. I think so, perhaps. You said fictitious? Yeah. As I mean, because I... Think, I mm, well, let me ask I this question. I don't know if it's fictitious. It well, be. let me ask this question. <laughs> let, me, let me ask this question, because, I mean, you're, you're obviously doing a very good deed. But one statement that I had just said, I said that step one, we have to acknowledge that. We have to acknowledge that. That's what you guys it. are Dig doing, yeah. you know? Second thing you have to do is discuss it. Mm -hmm. So you're discussing it, okay? So today, I want to concentrate on the young and old. Oh, awesome. Okay? Let's do that. So... I want to I wanna discuss, you know, because the first thing we hear from the older generation, you know, them young boys, they have their pants sagging, you can see their last. <laughs> now, I'm going to throw down the gauntlet, and I'm going to say that the young generation got it right. Mm. The young bangers got it right. Mm. Let, me, let me just put this out there. This excludes the black nationalists. Mm -hmm. The Crips, the Bloods, Gangster Disciples, the GDs, the Vice Lords. They have the correct structure, okay? Now, you talk about culture and where we come from. Most of your West Africans, your Wagadungu, Mamprusi, the Dagomba, the Ferdagomba, the Dagomba, all the, we're, most of us are descendants, majority of mm -hmm. black Africans are descendants from those tribes because mm -hmm. it was a shorter span, mm -hmm. not saying that they didn't enslave other Africans, but they were, we were immediate access. So a lot of those Africans have always operated under a council. Right. A council, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's take it to the Al Sharptons, your Jesse Jackson, whoever. <laughs> let's take it to your local churches. Let's take it to your local mosques. Uh -huh. Let's take it all everywhere across the black community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's take it to your Farrakhan. Mm. Nation of Islam. Well, you're going to have bean pies coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> Bring on the bean pies. See, see, see what, what they don't understand, Yanga, is you, could, you know, you, you got the Nation of Islam, but then let's look at the Crips. Let's look at the Bloods. Now, people say, oh, Black Son, you're, you're, you're glorifying violence and, and, and drug dealing and all this and drive by. No, I am glorifying their structure of Black nationalism that they've carried on. Because when you point to the Crips, you cannot tell me who is their centralized leader. Yeah. When you do that to the Bloods, when you do that to the, all these, in fact, it goes over into the La Eme, mm -hmm. MS-13. They have no centralized leadership. Now, when we talk about black nationalism, you know, you talked about the Black Panther Party, Malik, Zulu, Sabaz, 
declaring martial law. Now, from my studies and understanding of black nationalism, when I studied Marcus Garvey, mm -hmm. he had a council. Mm -hmm. he, had a con he got a Congress. He had, a, he had these bodies of government. And so when I say that the Crips and Bloods have it right, they had it right. You cannot teach these descendants a centralized government. Right. You cannot. That's right. Now, people might look at me funny because, you know, I'm, a, I'm an atheist. But I, I can speak your language, though. Mm -hmm. See, when Jesus said, where two or three gather, there I, I am in the midst. Right. He wasn't talking about a centralized leadership. A council. He was talking about a council. Yeah. So with that being said, gentlemen, we need solutions here. We need to bridge the gap between young and old so the young people have the correct structure. So with that being said, can we, can uh, we? Yes, yes. Well, the first thing I want to say uh, is respect, because I feel like the younger generation has lost a certain level of respect right. for the older generation. Right. Um, so it has to start there. But even with that said, the, the older generation doesn't give the level of respect to the younger generation that they also deserve. Right. Because when we, when we do say the younger generation, we're all, for me that goes 14 to 25, 2025. Um, how that gap and divide started, um, I would have to say goes back to this Willie Lynch uh, syndrome. And I don't know, he was saying it may be fictitious, and I've heard that before, that this whole Willie Lynch thing may be fictitious. But what I've read in this book, Breaking the Chains of the Willie Lynch Syndrome, um, what he talks about in this book, I can clearly see how it has manifested itself Absolutely. until today's reality. Right. So whether, uh, whatever the source of this plan was, the plan is in effect and it has been in effect and it has been working right. for generations and generations. Um, now, you said how can we bridge this gap between yes. the young and the old? Well, I want to hear your, you, I want to hear across the table solutions because I got to get my own personal solution. I mean, not my personal solutions, but my well uh, analogy of how to come up with solutions. We have to come to the table with a, a, a general respect for one another as black men okay. in general. Mm -hmm. And if we don't come to the table with that respect, then nothing is going to be heard, you know, from party to party. That's okay. right. Um, and so that that's one place we have to start. And then have an understanding that the younger generation has to understand where the older generation is coming from that's and the right. struggles that they went through in order for the younger generation to do the things that the older generation is so upset about, which is the sagging of the pants, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, the loud music. Wait a minute, and stuff why like does that. the sagging of the pants bother? Oh, go ahead, Yanga, because it yeah, doesn't just bother me. Because, you know, I think that we're in that, here's the funny part, because we're in that in between. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still have that, what we're dealing with our elders, and uh -huh. then we're still dealing with younger people. Yeah. Right? You know, yes. and I find that, and I work with a lot of the street youth. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that has happened, and since being in that in between, it gives us a little insight. Mm -hmm. One of the things that has happened, in my opinion, is parentages. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Say when that. you look at, and not just I'm talking about parents, I'm talking about in the, in the general, as a collective, as an African people. As a young man coming up, if I'm systematically being murdered by the police and you can't protect me as my elder, right. you right. can't prov provide income, when, when I'm dealing with my young man and they're 17, 18, and up in their 20s, they're not just young men, these are young fathers. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? They right. have children. Right. So I'm not providing plans, I'm not providing any type of any real thing. So they have to rely on when it, why? I mean, it's like, respect you for what? Kind right. of say, you know what I'm saying? It's like, respect you, with, man, I'm getting killed by the police. You know, I'm going to jail, I got a baby I can't feed. I'm out here, there's no economic plan, there's, there's nothing, so why should I respect you? I think also, too, is what's looked at is to help them take their rebellion and put it in a constructive way. Right. I tell everybody, the pants sagging, I asked a young man too, you know, man, why you wear your pants sagging? You know, we did the disclaimer that parental, that the language yeah, is gonna be deep. kind of rough. Yeah. I said, why you wear your pants sagging? He said, I wear my pants sagging to offer the world easy access to kiss my ass. Wow. That's right. Because that's how they feel about it. The world can kiss my butt. You know what I'm saying? Because they haven't been, I haven't been offered anything. This is just a brother that had a little insight. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is that we have to understand if we don't give them constructive ways to show the rebellion, they're going to do it. Our parents did it. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, it was the conk and the perm yeah. for our parents. That's how they rebelled. In my <laughs> time, 
It was earrings. these in my ear. Yeah. My grandmother told me only little girls wear earrings. <laughs> but, but yeah, why does that have to be rebellion? Why can't it be an expression of culture? That, I, I don't look at like culture. my locks as being rebellious. It's <laughs> right. so like, hand sagging I mean, is not a reflection of culture. I don't know where culture that came from. Is okay. that what you were talking about when you said why does it have to be a reflection of culture? Well, well, he's using no, well, he's using many examples okay. now, now, now. That, okay, that's, that's where I will. Okay. 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 I got you. Yeah, it is a culture. Boy, that's that's a prison. Prison. Okay, that's 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 what saying, brother, is a prison culture, right? Right. That's yeah. that's yeah. that's why I had to get clarification right. on what that's he a was prison talking culture. about. Okay, and I gotta welcome our brother DJ. You're like the prodigal son. Man, it's like a reunion here. Definitely. You know, and we want I definitely you back. feel good, That's you know, to hear the brothers building, you know, and it's good to be back. Um, it's good to have you back. You know, Dr. Dr. Amos Wilson said years ago that oftentimes problems between groups create problems within groups. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. And Ooh. our inability to deal with problems outside of our group, i.e. white supremacy, is actually causing the erosion internally within our own communities. Mm. Okay. So when we talk about brothers coming together, yeah. that's absolutely critical. Yes. Right. Because to your point, young people really don't respect us. Mm. That's right. Because we haven't dealt with the things that are primarily destroying their lives. Mm. That, that is external to us as a group or as a community. Right. And so Dr. Welsing said in her book, The ISIS Papers, that it's going to take black male muscle mass mm. to free African people. And so I think the question is, are we up for that task? Do we have that level of clarity to really understand where we are as a, as a people within this context? Because the Al Sharptons, the Jesse Jacksons, and everyone else that we may call compradors or sellouts, they are actually created from the internal dissension that is, cre that, that is caused by not having that united front. Mm -hmm. right. So at the end that's of the right. day, oppression creates the sellout. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. I like that. Wow. That's, that's right. a different, I like that. Ooh, I like and that. so down, we brother. can, yeah, and so we can, you know, point fingers and talk about people like them, and, and I do sometimes as well. But I also understand that if we don't deal with the root cause of how the sellout is created, then we're just going to continue to have that. Why? Because the human being is conditioned to escape pain or right. to avoid pain. Mm -hmm. And if black or being African is synonymous with being in pain, then you have people now saying, hey, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Right. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, I want to have everything to do with my oppressor. Mm -hmm. right. You see? So it's an escape. It's a release. You see? And so, you know, going back to the, um, to the economic issue, we have to understand that all economic systems are rooted in a culture. Mm -hmm. okay. And it is that culture that denotes value to those people within the culture. Okay? Any economic system where you're talking capitalism, socialism, co cooperatives, whatever, you, whatever system it is, it, it's all based on relationships between people. So at the end of the day, people make it work. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's just that when we talk about capitalism, capitalism is a European or white supremacist expression in economics. Right. right. So yeah. when we as African people practice capitalism, we are actually expressing white supremacy mm -hmm. in economics, right. the way that we relate to That's one right. another. Right, right. That's a fact. By what we denote or, or, or see as value. Right. So there's a relationship that takes place between you and I if we agree that the Benz has value. Right. Mm. Right. You see, but that is not who we are or who we are supposed to be. Right. It's never because everything about European culture is based on the object, the reduction or the reducing to an object. Question then. So yes. when it comes to that, with that statement there, the object, that's key. We were the objects. Right. We were totally objectified. And right. the thing is, we had value, but we were worthless at the same time. Right. And I find that interesting because it's like, how do you have those two type of dynamics in one sentence? I'm, your, I'm an object of your, not even of your affection, but of worth to you. Mm -hmm. But yet and still, I'm still worthless in your eyes because I'm not even seen as a human being. I'm, look, your animals are worth more than I am, but yet I'm still 
an object of yours. But see, that's, and, and, and when you really understand, or when we really understand white supremacy, we, we will understand that, you know, to really, the ultimate racist is the one who can take their issue mm -hmm. and project it onto oh, you, you yeah. and yes, have yes, you yes. internalize yes. it yes. and yes. act that's it right. out. I, right. I agree with okay? that, yes. That's what, that's <laughs> what the ultimate racist is able to do. So we're talking about a power dynamic. If I yeah. have the power and control to shape the way you think yes. in relation to me, but also in relation to yourself, mm -hmm. which is the most important thing. Which goes back to self-hate. The whole psychology is behind self-hate. Right. Well, we, yeah. we can call it self-hate, but oftentimes it's the woundedness that comes from the lack of control and power over your own life. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I don't, I don't necessarily like to use the word hate in reference to African people mm -hmm. because really what it is, it's a woundedness. It's a powerlessness. I like what you right. use that escapism. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. You see? And it displays itself in depression, mm -hmm. apathy. I mean, you know, many different ways, you know, and Dr. Marimba Ani goes so far as to say we are suffering from collective depression wow. yeah, as a result of being in ma'afa or being in illness. Right. OK, right. so you take a people and you place them in a system that is not their own. Right. You can expect certain things to happen. We can't have healthy relate. I always say, you know, you can't have healthy relationships with your women or with your woman if you're not in a position of power. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, how can your wife really go to sleep under a true blanket of security? Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Right. You see, so our relationships are automatically problematic. Mm -hmm. okay? Because again, we're dealing with power. And to be an African man and to not be in power is to be demasculated. Right. We all are affected by that. Right. Just to be able to see tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. We have to accept a certain level of demasculization. Mm -hmm. You see? Because if you function as an African in this space, it's very frightening to the power structure. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. Yes. You see? So ultimately, I think, you know, we, we've gone from freedom to liberation, but I think we need to go from liberation to sovereignty. Mm -hmm. We have to have the control of the spaces and places where we are as a sovereign people. A people That's the sanctuary. ultimate expression yeah. of power in terms of how I define it. Otherwise, where we're not competing against anyone else. Right, right, right. You see, where we're self-governing, self-determined, mm -hmm. self-reliant, all of those things, mm -hmm. as a sovereign people are. But, yeah, exactly. but DJ, we have to deal with sovereignty realistically. Mm -hmm. Sovereignty requires defending ourselves that might require bloodshed. Def right. Defending and this is a reality. Unity, first of all. Mm -hmm. Well, no, that, yeah, right, right. I agree. Defending the unity, because when you talk about sovereignty, I mean, let's look at like Saddam Hussein. Let's look at uh, uh, Gaddafi. You know what I'm saying? These are brothers who wanted the economical sovereignty, and look what happened to them. So I'm all for sovereignty. Mm -hmm. I'm all for it, but I mean, I don't want people talking about, oh, yeah, we need sovereignty, and y'all will fight our battles. I feel insulted as a mm -hmm. black man mm -hmm. when people say that. You know, or or just write the C one five hundred one C three and go to the courts, and I do not want to hear that. That's not living in reality. The reality is, Malcolm said, you know, true power is behind by her land. Land. How do you get land? Bloodshed. I agree. I agree, and and I think we have to allow um, people the ability to kind of climb the ladder of of clarity. Yeah. Right. You know, they may not be where you are, but they have to get to that point, you know, you know what I mean? And we have to kind of be mindful of how we, we, we deal with and approach people who may not be where we are in terms of clarity. Okay. Because the ultimate thing that you want to avoid is confusion on the battlefield. That's where we are right uh, now. Totally yeah, and, yeah. And, and the question is, how do we rise above the noise, the chaos and confusion of those who are still just trying to find a comfortable place in illness or in ma'afa. Yeah. Right, right. Right? And so any talk about reform is, is meaningless. Mm -hmm. You can't reform someone whose survival is based on killing you. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. You can't reform that. That has to be destroyed. So Aikwe Arma teaches us in 2000 Seasons, you have to destroy the destroyers. That's an obligation, you see? Well, and because we have not been in a position to do that, then we give birth to children 
who ultimately Just we lose control of. Yep, that's right. exactly. We give birth to them, exactly. but by the time they reach that age that you talked about, 14, 15, Man, where they really need the things, years, right. yeah. then they look in the community, around the community, and the community is supposed to be able to provide their basic needs, right. and that's they right. don't see those structures and systems in place. That's why I brought up goes, the structure of the street games. Yes, yeah. and it goes right. back to like what DJ saying, and with that sickness, man, and I love that, uh, what DJ said, we implode. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You'll find the old turning against the young. Right. For for our lack of, for our inability, you know what I'm saying? For the depression and things we're going through and for, you know, it's like blaming the, when you walk, you know, like the man leaving his wife and kids or whatever and putting all the blame on where they were this, they were that. Right. So right. this is how you end up what we find with the young. They pull their pants. We blame every, everything. We put everything on their pants being around their No, ways. but see, really, really what the youth are is an indication of our inability. See, the youth are really an embarrassment of what we have not done. They are the constant reminder of our failure. You see? Right. It's just. We turn it on them. Right. Yeah. And so I remember um, driving with my daughter. She's 17. Uh, she was about 13 at the time, and we were driving past um, the homeless shelter off of P Street, P Street and Pine. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there was a homeless brother on the corner, and I noticed that when we stopped at the light, she kind of looked down. Mm -hmm. And I said, Nadia, why, why are you looking down? She said, I, I don't want to see that. I said, well, right. why don't you want to see that? Well, in, in, for her, it was a reminder of the sure. pain that's associated with being a black man mm -hmm. right. in this yeah, society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she had to turn away. But I said, no, you have to look at that. Mm -hmm. You have to look at that. So that's what the youth are. They are a constant reminder of our powerlessness as yes. men. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you're not able to process that in the appropriate way, the thing that you do is lash out against mm -hmm. that reminder. Yeah. You see, because it's a re it, it reveals your own inadequacy. Yep. It's you see, holding up a mirror. Right. 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 And don't get yeah. me wrong. You're going to have some stress based on the young and old. That's a healthy <coughs> yeah. dichotomy. Yeah. Okay. You see, because the youth are not and they're never going to they're never supposed to do it the way that elders did it right, or right. elders do it. Okay. But elders, wise elders have to know, OK, well, I'm here to guide provide wise, wise counsel, sound advice, and then let the youth in their creative expression do it their way. You see? Put their own twist on it. Right. Yeah. Just like we can see now with the RBG movement. I yeah. love that movement. Yes. Well, not you know? only with yes. RBGs, but, you know, I mean, I, that's why I'm going to give a shout out to Nandi and, and Yanga, because you're right before me. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, I mean, they've just taken uh, a structure and they put all these different factions as, as black nationals, they just came in and they brought them together. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I want to give kudos to Brother Yang. And appreciate it, appreciate it. Shout out to Nundi, you know yeah. what I'm saying, for mm -hmm. y'all doing what you're doing. And it's not about, you know, I know Nundi, she'd be like, I don't want the white man's peace noble. Yeah. Yeah. Tell black son he's a bootlicking Uncle Tom. <laughs> <laughs> That's, not That's not the point. The yeah. point is you guys yeah. have done great work, yeah. okay? Yeah. Well, it's like it's, it's it's something that goes back to like what you know DJ is saying and 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 whatever and the brother here uh, is saying is that we just I realized that we just had a responsibility mm -hmm. that the structure with the the decentralized government the council how they turned to one another was already there but it was it was, they were lacking political education and right. that we had whether I like it or not this was the future generation coming up that's right so when you can come in like when you see on the tape um, and we just use the common language that they use you know mm -hmm. oppression breeds like it breeds. Uh, Uncle Tomism it breeds resistance. So even you find out of destruction of the Panther Party, what we call the Third Development Panther Party, when we had these so-called street tribes, like they was breaking it down on the thing, blood, brotherly love, overcoming oppression, destructive societies, Crips, right. community revolution and progress, uh, uh, BGs was black growth and development. So all of them were structured about some type of empowerment, but right. um, they were targeted, systematically targeted, like any other progressive black national movement, like the right. Panthers. So mm -hmm. what they did was snatch the leadership up. Right. Yeah. When you snatch the leadership up, all you left is with the colors and the emblems. The yes. symbolism. The symbolism. Yeah. symbolism. Right. And people and the young people are going to start putting their own meaning yeah. right, to the symbolism. So when the OGs finally came home and the other people came home, you didn't even almost didn't recognize what the young people had turned it into with, with influence and help from outside forces with the drugs in the mm -hmm. community, with access to uh, stronger military weapons and this mm -hmm. and that. So we have to know that we're definitely under attack. And it goes back to, like I said there again, what the brother's saying. A lot of times we feel inadequate. So it's like he says, the man that goes home and beats his wife. He's getting beat by the world. He mm -hmm. goes in, right. and his wife says one thing and he's all over the place, you yeah, know, because right, yeah. he's angry. So we do, we end up, turn up, end up doing that to the youth and not providing a structure or a platform 
to hear what they have to say. Right. I think a lot of times, and I encourage everybody, check that video out. I'm going to go to you, Vince. Check that video out that we did on Arena with the Young it's People called, Spoken, right. the council, the, council. Uh, the war on youth, and allow them, and we have to listen to right. what, they're, what they're trying to tell us. Oh, well, I'm glad you said that because that was going to go to the point mm -hmm. I was going to make because the younger generation feels like they're not being listened to. Mm -hmm. The older generation feels like the younger generation is not listening mm -hmm. to what they're telling them. Mm -hmm. And so you have this, this conflict, but if we come to the table in a mutual respect for one another, like you said earlier, uh, well, what, is the, what do the young people have to respect the older generation for? Because they feel like they ain't done anything for them. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know what I, I've attempted to do for you if you're not coming to the table with a right. willing ear to listen right. to, to, to the story that I can tell you and, and the possible wisdom I can give you as to how I've done it, what I've done, and this and this and this mm -hmm. way. And then once the older person <coughs> does that, give the younger person with the, the new age stuff and technology and stuff to take the information that you've given, that the older generation has given them and put their own creative spin and twist on it like you were saying. And right. say, I think we will be better. To, the way y'all did it was cool for, for when y'all did it, mm -hmm. but it's 2014 now, and we think we should organize this way and run mm -hmm. it and, and move this way and, and, and at least try to have that mutual respect and listening ear to be able to hear each other out and to hear what each side is saying before making... But well, see, that's I why I want to do with the council. Yeah, oh, and, and we work with the council. I think it's difficult because I work with a lot of the street youth. When you're dealing with, it's hard to sit and listen and plan when you're dealing in, when you're living in survival mode. Yeah. Right. right. When you're living day to day, when yeah. it's all about where I'm going to lay my head, how I'm going to eat, it's hard to plan for a future because you're living for the day. Right. So I think that as, when we start to come up with a strong strategy and a plan, mm -hmm. and we can provide, even if it's at sometimes a bare minimal, you know what I'm saying, some type of uh, economics or some type of something where he doesn't have to worry about going out here getting his sandwich or feeding himself, mm -hmm. then he's more apt or she's more apt to listen. But when you're on survival mode, it's like, listen, man, first of all, I can't hear you because I'm on the move. Right. Secondly, don't tell me nothing. You know what yes, I'm saying? Right. If, you can, if you can't help me some kind of way, shape, form, and fashion, one of the things that I have to give shout out to Nundy that we were able to capture the young man's is, is we didn't just do a free the breakfast program for the kids, but that the homies in the hood, they could come at least get one hot meal. Right. That day, mm. And you would be surprised. You would be surprised. Man, I ain't putting y'all out there, homeboys. But you would yeah. be surprised how, many, how they would depend it on after hustling all day, because there ain't no money in the dope game and all that no, stuff. No, there ain't no money out there, really. You know, so you we'd be surprised how far uh, a plate of raviolis or mm -hmm. whatever would take you and have the young brothers just sitting down and leaning that they were more apt to learn how they could do for self and learn self-sufficient and to be independent. Right. Yeah. I want to say one thing, Anger. Also, going back to what you were saying, brother, and everybody else, we have to learn how to meet people where they are. Yes. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. In, in the uh, the Black Males Forum, that's where, we, that's where we talk about bridging that gap between the young and the old. It's learning how to meet our people mm -hmm. where we are. Right. That young man on the street who's sagging his pants, who may have made that statement about, I want the world to kiss, this, this is an easy access for the world to kiss my behind. Well, let me meet him where, where he is. First and foremost, let me show him how much I love him. I don't know you from Adam, brother, but I love you because you're my younger brother. Right. Mm -hmm. Even though we don't come from the same mother and father, you're my younger brother and I love you. Let me show you this black love first. None of that, no homo, no, 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 no. Let me show you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I love you. Not because of you sagging your pants, but because you are who you are. Mm -hmm. The creator made you that way. So we can build from that. I'm meeting you where you are. Once I show you that I love you, and you see that those actions and work, those, those works in action, now your mindset will begin to change. It's like, okay, well, instead of me holding up all this resistance against this older brother, maybe I can listen to him because he showed me that he loves me. He's mm -hmm. not judging me based on my outward appearance right. or, my, or my conversation. And going back to what you said, yeah, I've, I've talked to a lot of young guys. Like when I used to work at the one, dealt with the teenagers. When they're in survival mode, they're not trying to hear you at all. But if I have some food to give, and I'm not just talking about, I'm talking about mental and spiritual food as well, right. they're, they're going to listen. If I say, okay, can you help me? Yeah, I got you, man, what you need? Well, I need help with this. I got that taken care of. Now we go, we, we cross one hurdle. We got like 10 or 12 more hurdles to cross. Mm -hmm. How you know, we cross I, the rest I of them? I think that um, <laughs> brothers in their late 30s, early 40s, that generation, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's absolutely vital that we get this right. right yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. we are that bridge between those elders mm -hmm. and yeah, the youth. The youth. That's, right. That's and, right. And oftentimes we don't realize how impactful, positive, 
hip hop was on our lives growing Man, up. What? But oftentimes, <laughs> if you have any level of social consciousness, it came by way of the music. It is. For those right. that, in our right. generation. Yeah, right. yeah, you're and right. so the youth, they didn't grow up with that. No. You know what I mean? They were fed a steady diet of negativity, you know. Commercial. The, 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 the worst of, well, you know, they call it shit hop, but, you know, <laughs> the worst of, of that expression. Right. You know what I mean? And so they don't have that. And so I think it's up to us to try to rebuild that generational continuity. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't have that, then there's no way we can, we can establish the relationships to be able to get from the elders that information. Yeah. That is still somewhat relevant in today's time. Not, not all of it, it but a lot of it is. Yep. Yes. You yep. see, and be in a position to pass that on to the youth that are looking at us today. Right. So right. we have a very important role to play. Because what I'm finding now in, in the young people is that they have less of a social consciousness than we had. Yes. Right. We have less of a social consciousness than our parents had. Right. Right. You see, right. so we see this this diminishing value of, mm. of of cultural continuity, and we're going. And if we don't, if we're not careful, we're going to allow now, which would be our grandchildren, mm. they won't care about anything mm. at all. That's African, and we're already seeing with the Raven Simones and, mm. and things like that yeah. a new level of unconsciousness being ushered in, where you don't even identify yourself with, as black. Uh, right. So it's like now right. you just want to totally disappear. But the one weapon that we have that I feel that is totally underutilized is our culture. Yeah. And I think someone brought that up, right? It's not competing against Europeans in their game. Right. You see, you can't fight a, someone who has a stronger weapon with the same weapon right. or with a smaller version of that weapon. Right. You see, if, if, if capitalism is basketball, then we should be playing football. We should yeah. be playing a right. totally different yeah. game yeah. based like on that. our yeah. level like of that. relationships that are established in the culture. Right. And so once we understand that, we literally have the power to pull the rug from under white supremacy. The most revolutionary thing that you can do is to have, to have the strength to walk away from the very thing that this system needs you to want. Mm. Mm. I like that. That is true. You see, when you have the strength to walk away from the very thing that this system relies on you to want and have an interest in and desire, you've already short-circuited the thing and you ain't fired one shot. Mm. Mm. Because you give it value. Mm. Yeah. And if you say, no, it ain't Gucci, it's Kente, then Gucci <laughs> ain't <laughs> No. You see? Well, I'm glad word, you say that, DJ, because I want to offer, you know, to, to the world. You know, I mean, when we look at police brutality, mm -hmm. automatically we're like, oh, yeah, he's going to get off with pay. Right. Or they're going to find him not guilty. Right. So I want to offer the youth their power, their voice. Mm -hmm. There's nothing stronger than the black boys. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be no Jagger who that took us down mm -hmm. or vice versa. So what I'm saying is that I want to offer the youth their power, their voice. So, you know, because we always talk about citizen review boards. Mm -hmm. So I want to give on? the street tribes the opportunity so that I don't seem like I'm insane. Mm -hmm. If they find this officer guilty or not guilty, and explain. Right. And whatever the outcome is from the majority of that vote, then we would declare it before the world. Because people are looking at us like we crazy. My son, you know, when, when Trayvon Martin died, he said, Dad, am I going to get shot? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is what my son said to me. Right. Am I going to get shot? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I said, no, son, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to promise you that you won't get shot. And, and I'm going to promise this to every black male. We're going to take the power back. Mm -hmm. And I'm calling out to all the Crips, all, all the street tribes. You know what I'm saying? We, we're going to present the council, Yanga. No doubt. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? And, and whether, you know what I'm saying, whether, whether we see the officer was in the wrong or the perpetrator, whatever, we're going we're gonna to articulate it. And our voice is going to matter. See, one thing that you said, Vince, about the older generation sitting down, I don't care who it is. That elder has to go before that council. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to go through that council. Transparency. Right. Mm -hmm. Transparency. Right. Meaning we don't, we don't do no under deals or worry about somebody payoffs. Meaning because one brother, and it's funny because, you know, he's from the GD. He said, he said you know, he's, he's like, I ain't a Black Panther yet. I don't, I don't know. I hate to put the brother out there. I ain't going to say his name. But he's like, hey, man, aren't you worried about so, uh, 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 infiltrator, infiltrator? I said, I don't worry about that. 
because transparency transcends all that. See, that's why J. Edgar Hoover fought so hard and so long against the nationalists because he knew that democracy does not work. No, it works. <laughs> yeah. But democracy, but democracy is basically black nationalism without transparency. Let me say that again. <laughs> democracy, the white man's democracy is a council without transparency. Democracy without transparency. So the difference is when we say, for you white people, democracy, when we say black nationalism, we're talking about a transparent government. Everything is done before the light. How we feel about, you know, what, 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 how we view these police, how we view these politicians, how we view the situation with the Ebola, all this, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I was like, you know, they had two doctors that came from Liberia, mm -hmm. took him down to the CDC. And they lived. And he, he, not only he lived, he came out and said, yeah, I feel fine. Yeah. I feel great. Yeah, right. <laughs> they have a guy that come in from Dallas. This guy said, I am, I, I've been in Liberia. I got a fever. Sick. I don't feel so well. I'm sick. They gave him Tylenol and sent yeah. him home. Game time and slid them home. So, I mean, th th this situation, it has to be a transparent system. You know, there has to be checks and balances. And in order for that to work, there has to be, as King Noble would say, black supremacy. Mm. I only say black supremacy because black people are the only people with true checks and balances. I, I know y'all confused. <laughs> I know the world is confused right now. The Palestinians, the Mexicans, the Asians, the white people do not have checks and balances. When you Co-sign for this government, as Gideon would say, you are part of the problem. Mm. Now, let's get back to the street tribes. Street tribes have normally spelt blood and fought each other. Mm. Right. So they are not going to sell out to each other. Right. I'm a Crip, your blood, you a GD. So there's a natural mutual respect because we fought each other. Mm. But now we're coming together. So now we as men are going to come together. And I say these groups are legit because they have spelt blood. Mm. They have right. spelt blood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because where I come from, if you haven't spoke blood, you get no respect. Mm -hmm. So Gideon, <laughs> and to all Vince, when you talk about peace and we shall overcome, where I'm from, you get no respect. It's a, it's a, it's That's just, it's just reality. It, 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 how it goes. And one of the things though, when you're speaking about the Palestinians and the um, Latino community, this and that, we're talking about nationalism. Nationalism, And right. they practice the nationalism in their form. One of the steps is going before our sovereignty, yeah. getting our things, is really just taking control of our communities. I, you know, like I said, I'm from Cleveland. When you go in Cleveland, they got Polish town, they got Chinatown, mm -hmm. they got, and when you go in Chinatown, what are you going to see in the stores? Chinese, Chinese. Chinese people. Mm -hmm. Even if it's Respect. a soul food restaurant. Yeah. Chinese people. You know what I'm saying? You can sell collard greens, <laughs> Back chitlins, Black 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 how many chitlins you want? Yeah. <laughs> Ten men, mean, uh, they're never going to allow an African, for, it, it would be a misnomer. If you go in Chinatown and see black folks running business in there, it's something wrong. Or any other right. ethnicity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, let me so say goes, something at Yanga. Every group naturally look out for themselves, yeah. so that's why every group cannot naturally govern the world. There's going to come a time, that, that time is coming now, where there's going to be a one world government. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they say that democracy is going to dominate the world. So black people, we naturally want to take care of everybody. Right. And, and, and then too, it's like what... But, but it's a good thing though. It's a good thing, but it's something that DJ said that's deep, I never thought about. It's that pain associated being black. Yeah. All right. So we want to distance ourselves. Mm -hmm. From being black, so it's not only that's why I want to. It's affiliate. It's it's identifying you said with everybody something. else. You said something. You know what I'm saying? And we have to stop <laughs> identifying. We have to start seeing victories. Yes, that's you know right. what I'm saying. Yes. Once we start that's seeing right. the small victories, once we start seeing, and like he was saying, the economic uh, dynamic is about people, about relationships. Mm -hmm. right. One of the things that we learn from the street tribes, and that I've learned from the street tribes, is that sense of camaraderie. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And if that can, I think that if you can get it, like we take a note, a page from Fred Hamp. You know, uh, Fred Ham Sr., you know, shouts out to Junior, Ham Sr., right. Fred Jr., but Fred Ham Sr., when he was doing the Rainbow Coalition, dealing with the different street tribes in Chicago, he was about politicizing them because he understood the power that they had in that sense of unity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if we can get that and start to spread that on a bigger scale and show them how that's a black nationalism, show them how it needs to just go from, uh, if they are doing illicit activities or illegal activities, going into legitimizing their things and patrolling and protecting their neighborhoods, and so they can see an identity, have an identity, and it's not that honor and pride of just being a Crip, mm -hmm. but in that honor and pride of being an African, being black. Because one of the things, we get our butts tore up in L.A. Mm -hmm. 
That's because right. we only identifying with just being Crips or just being Bloods mm -hmm. or just being that. When the the uh, the Hispanics identify with La Raza, my people. That's right. Right. You know right. what I'm saying, and that's a whole different phenomena right. and a whole different dynamic. Right. And and, but, and you know when people ask me, um, you know whether I, whether or not I got a religion or what's what's my political position or ideology, I tell them simply race first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That that defines everything. So if it's a street tribe that's rooted in race first, I support it. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? The the other thing is going going back to the to the economic piece and why capitalism is so problematic for us is that when when you talk of you know, young people ask the question, does black life matter? Mm. Right. right? And people say Black life matters, but what young people need us to do is demonstrate That's that, right. that black life matters. Right, right. See, it can't, <laughs> just, it can't just be rhetoric or a cliche. Yeah. We right. have to put that into action, i.e., the defending and protecting of their lives. If we're not able Absolutely. to do that, then we're no better than the, than the European who speaks with the forked tongue. Yeah. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And so our, the young people now, they, they are figuring out, okay, this is a game. I have been brought into existence in a trick bag situation. Mm -hmm. And I'm really powerless because when I look around at my community, they can't even provide for my basic needs because the late nature of their relationships are so problematic with each other, they can't even get along long enough to build. Except for the tribes. Right, exactly. I just Ex want to put that so, out there. So they, they are on the right track, but what we have to do, to Yanga's point, is politicize them. I agree. You see, to get them to understand who the true enemy is in relation to where they are. Because everything is rooted in power. Every discussion is ultimately a discussion of power. Right. You see, those who have it and us who are trying to regain it mm -hmm. from them. So I don't expect white people to get along with me. Matter of fact, my, the way that I know that I'm effective is when they don't like me. Right. You see, oh, and, oh. And, and, it's not, and it's not so much of me wanting to debate or even discuss anything with them. I, and, and this is the other thing I think we need to do. We have to be able to envision a world beyond white power. That's yeah. right. That's because right. that dictates the nature of how we organize. That's right. You see, if we can imagine a world beyond white power or ma'afa, then we begin to build institutions that reflect that forward thinking. Rather than just adjusting to what is, build what you want. Mm. Right. right. That's what he talks about in this book is basically black, black people having their own, uh, like you said, we're people without a sanctuary. Mm, right. Um, and getting back to your point about gaining our black sovereignty, he talked about in the book the word mm -hmm. free man. Mm -hmm. And he states that even though we're physically not in bondage anymore, black people, mm -hmm. we are truly not a free people because mm -hmm. we weren't a party to our own liberation. Yes. Okay, we right. relied solely on the white man, the white power structure, to define what our freedom was. Right, uh -huh. exactly. And we are still living by the, their definition mm -hmm. of what right. it means freedom. to be free. Now, mm -hmm. being free to y'all means you can drive with the car you want, mm -hmm. you can get whatever uh, Comcast station right. you want, whatever channel mm -hmm. you want, that's not you clear. know, whatever big house you want. If, right. that's, if that's freedom to you, then you free. Right. You free okay, so, so, so right now, right now, how, I'm glad you brought that up. How do we define freedom? Mm. I'm going to start with you, Vince. How do we define that? Uh, well, according to Mr. Alvin Morrow in his book, defining our own freedom is being able to, like you said, uh, remove ourselves from this system, this white system that we're up under. And then, like you said earlier, building our own schools, our own economy, our own institutions. Yeah, but one on, on one, see, this is the, 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 the dichotomy, the, 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 the difficulty I have. Okay. On one hand, we say a white power structure, right? A system. Like Gideon would say, oh, you guys just participating in that. And then on the other hand, you know, you got black historians. I can bring Unk in here. And he talks, you know, we talk about how the white man stole from mm -hmm. us. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do we, like, democracy. Okay. How do we, I mean, how do we differentiate that? I mean, I just said that basically our democracy is transparency. Mm -hmm. Right. But you also. But, that uh, destruction of black civilization, the Masi Empire. I want to give you, a reference there, but go ahead. You also said that our system was involved in integrity. Um, and so if you no, do no. the... No, no, that was Gideon that said that. If you do the system right, 
i.e. if we want to remove ourselves from this this white system that we're under and wait wait hold on i can gavel you nation. I, i'll saw i'll softly gavel you <laughs> <laughs> you said <laughs> integrity that a better gavel? right you said integrity that's something that gideon spilled i said checks and balances right like i said you but, have street tribes that fought each other killed each other but the democracy that we have now don't have checks and balances like they should because they don't that's have where black they don't have, they don't have integrity that's where black nationalism that's why comes that's in. what i'm saying see, if we issue. want to do it ourselves and have institute integrity into it then we can do that we have Inte well, define integrity because i say checks and balance integrity is doing what's right when nobody's watching right and and it becomes it's, it's, almost impossible to have cultural continuity under oppression yes. that's not that's not a natural thing for, right. for people to to do or try to live in you know what i mean it's like you want to try to maintain uh some vestiges of of who you are under the power and control of another people or i.e another culture Thank you, you Thank see you. and so what what that has caused for us is the fragmented thinking. We literally think that we can walk with the fence fragmented. between our legs. Thank you. You see, mm, thank so you. You we give our head. enemy the best of our time and our people the rest What's of our time. Head? And we wonder Woo! why we are still in the condition that we're in. Say that. You yes, see, sir. because yes, we, sir. We, we, don't have, we don't have the vision, <laughs> the type of vision that it takes to do what I prescribe to be all in for the race every day. Right. Right. You see, and make that your way of life or your worldview. Right, that is yeah. something that you wake up to every morning and you close your eyes to every night and you know no other way, you see? Oh, and, I, and you do that when the cameras are on, when the cameras are I, off, when somebody's looking, when somebody's not, you know what I mean? You, it becomes your full expression of your sovereignty. Thank you see, you. that you are all in for your people, which is really an indication of all in for self. Yeah. You see, because the community provides you the protection, the nourishment, the sustainability mm -hmm. that you need to survive in this world. You see, and because we have not been able to do that, there's a price to pay now. Mm -hmm. We are paying that price. Right. But I, again, I know that we can overcome this. I know that we can right, because I, I, we, I, we right. yeah, I but agree. we just have to understand again that it's not about, it's not about adjusting to, to this. That's why I don't play the political mm -hmm. game. Right. You see, see, when we talk about when, when a brother is shot down in the street and then black politicians come up and say we need or police officers need sensitivity training, training right. what no, they no, have no, right. to understand is the sensitivity comes from the culture itself. Yeah. Thank you. See, yeah. under a system of white supremacy, there white folks no ain't supposed to be sensitive to black life. Right. Yeah. So why are we trying to teach someone sensitivity when everything about their cultural expression is for them to hate Africans. Yeah. Well, let, let, let me say let yeah. me say one thing because I know I know Gideon mentioned the the cameras. He's saying they don't work statistically. We are California where they have cameras. The 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 police uh, brutality complaint has gone down. This is a fact. It went down by like eighty yep. percent. Right, right, right. So so what I'm saying is I, I don't care. I'm addressing black males right now, yeah. right. and so. Yeah, what they're saying, isn't that relying too much of the goodwill of men? Uh, I, mean, I'm, I, I'm, I, uh, I think so. I think integrity does. I think that one of the things, and one of my teachers, Dr. Ahmed Muhammad, formerly known as Max Stanford, he, he said one of the things in the 70s was the biggest when the revolutionary was battling the reformists. We was big spending time with one another. I say this, that like Franz Fanon says in The Wretched of the Earth, when a man fights, you can't tell him how to fight. You know right. what I'm saying? So if... You have the, like me, I know I'm a revolutionary. I'm not a reformist. I know that it's not going to change right. within the system, through the system, or right. anything like that. But I do say that if, you know, you're getting your butt kicked five times a day, <laughs> and you got somebody that can go in there and pass a law, and one of them butt whoopings is eased up, then, I, you know, I'll take the four times a day. <laughs> I think that, you know, tougher sentencing for, like, I think that you have to have fight on all fronts. You have mm -hmm. to be prepared. You can't just wait on reformist laws. You know what I'm saying? You can't wait. Well, they're trying to change the system because we know the system wasn't for us. You know what I'm saying? So I think that you have to have revolution. You have to be preparing to be completely and totally separated like these. You say you can't be trying to get adjusted mm -hmm. to this way of life. It goes back to freedom. I think freedom to me is the right to practice Kujakalil. You know, as the New Black Panthers, we do the Nguza Saba. Mm -hmm. Kujakalil self-determination, the right to determine my destiny as an African man here in America. All right. That, the right you know to define that, my freedom. Right to, whether it's to stay here, to go there, to have our own thing or whatever. Let me say this too, and I, yeah, and I last, because we got last yeah. minutes, I know everybody will get it. Yo, cop the, our first edition 
uh, the new Black Panther Party, the People's Party, under the leadership of uh, our national chair, Crystal Muhammad, National Minister of Information. COP, our first edition. You got that on there, man? COP, our first edition. It's all about the political prisoners, man. There is no right. continuation of the struggle if you don't know where the origin began at. So it's all about political prisoners. COP that piece. That's right. And uh, oh, DJ, announce uh, the, the Warriors Conference. Okay, real quick. We're, we're going to be um, putting together, or actually it's already put together, but uh, bringing... Uh, five well-known warriors in our ra for our race together on October 18th at the 595 Event Center in Atlanta, uh, starting at 2 o'clock. And uh, it's, it's Brother Professor Griff, Baba Inwalamu Baruti, the Brother Irritated Genie out of D.C., and Saira Sutton Seti, all hosted by the warrior goddess Zaza Ali, October 18th at 595 Event Center, 2 p.m. All right. And I, I just want to say this. Uh, one of the things that Willie Lynch uses is death. Yeah. You know, because they always say, well, you know what happened to that brother? You know, he got <laughs> shot down. You know what happened to him? You know, what happened to Fred Hampton legitimizes that Fred Hampton. Yeah. What happened to Huey P. Newton legitimizes mm -hmm. Huey P. Newton. Right. What happened to Malcolm X legitimizes Malcolm X. Yeah. It's, it's an unfortunate reality. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're doing something and you're still, you're an elder and you're still living, Whatever movement you done did, and you're still alive, apparently it that. was not significant. I said that about Jesse Jackson today. I'm glad you said that. I promise you I said that about That him goes today. to Jesse Jackson. That goes mm -hmm. to anybody who, I was there with Martin Luther King, and I was there, and if you're still here, maybe you... Yeah. Your existence was not that significant. Maybe you got too many kickbacks. <laughs> right, right. He was, <laughs> but he was they got rid of especially him. Especially if you seek an accolade. Yeah. Especially if, you, if you're doing it for the accolades. If you're mm -hmm. still in the struggle, because we got some warriors, some elders who have been around there still in the struggle. Hold up yeah. that paper. Hold you know up that paper again. We got again. some people. Right. You know, They're all in some, there. Yeah. We got some people in here, man, who are still in the struggle, still doing the struggle. That's why I say it's important to get this paper, man. Know what the know the sacrifices the people have put before us, and I mean, have laid their lives on the line. That's some right. of these brothers and sisters have been incarcerated 30, oh, longer than a lot of the people are walking the earth. That's 30, right. 40 years yeah, yeah. That's for our liberation. It's right. a long time. And if we don't know about them, and you know what I'm saying? If we don't know what's going on with them, we plan with this thing. Yeah, right. we plan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We plan with this thing. So yeah, I, right. I encourage my people, man, to study, organize, study, organize, study, organize to be a work, you know, work, uh, work, work study group. Work. Go ahead, you yeah. know, I, I'll leave it like this. Um, Baba Chinwe Izu, Izu had a quote, when you lack power, the only difference between begging and demanding is the tone of your voice. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like that. I, like I can hear that. Man, I like that. I can hear laughing with the boot. Man, we, yeah, it's man. good to have Brother DJ back again, yeah. man. This was like a, a family reunion. Definitely, brother, we hope that we come get you back on, on some insightful stuff, man, because this, yeah, this was heavy. Yeah. Oh, we, uh, I just want to say we want DJ back. I demand it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we demand it. Brother, having a brother on And I want to apologize for the distractions. I'm glad you're back, brother, because yeah. we need black nationalists in the struggle. Uh, I'm going to let you close out after I do. Okay. But I just wanted to say something about this book. Uh, reading this book has really enlightened me personally, and it has really opened my eyes and really given me an understanding and really let me know that we are really at war mm -hmm. in this That's country. Right. Right. And even in this book, he states that 85% of black people in this country don't know that we are at war. Mm. Um, so I think this book, uh, Breaking the Curse of Willie Lynch, The Science of Slave Psychology, I think it should be in every black home. Uh, I think it, it will give you an, an understanding of the enemy and how they were thinking when they instituted this whole system of slavery and how they intended it to run generations and generations to tear the black family apart mm -hmm. and tear black men apart so that we won't have unity because the biggest mm -hmm. fear that the white man have in this country is that we will wake up and all of a sudden want to turn the tables hey. and, 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 and uh, kick them out of power yeah. and they wouldn't know what to do. So they, they're really fearful of that. Let's um, Winston. Oh. Go to win. Can, can I get one time? Man, you still do the war on the horizon? No, no, I, mean, I, I don't. I'm gonna tell you to plug it. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> we gonna do the arena for now. On. <laughs> <laughs> now, I just want to say uh, thank you, brothers, for having me on this panel. It was it was a great experience um, to get some views and thoughts and whatnot out um, to the plug audience. That, uh, man's program again. Yeah, oh yeah, we also have um, over at Atlanta Good Shepherd. We have a Black Males Forum. Um, this the last, the second to last Friday of every month. I would love to have people come out. Um, it would be great right. to get to, because we have to fix the issues within the black community first before we can actually go out and, 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 and organize and be that, that black 
national front That's for right. and for all black right people. On. We have to learn how to first love ourselves and take care of ourselves first. Because right. going back to something you said, we always want to help everybody else. <laughs> no, there's right. nothing wrong with that. Right. But who, but who right. wants to help, help us? us first? Right, right, right. 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 Well, we should right. help ourselves. I, I just, right. let, me, let me just close say this because, yeah, well, I'm going to close out. Basically, Mom and Jerry she said, when black people come up, we all come, come up. We all right. come right. up. Let's stop that crab in the barrel mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks right. for tuning in. That's for every race. That's for every race. All One Word 2013. Check us out on YouTube. All right. Peace. Excellent. Appreciate Man, it, that was awesome. I'm about to go home. Wait, no, I was going to say, when do you do the uh, smoking? <laughs> I'm going to have to leave. Batman was trying to.